At News 5 investigates a plea deal. The 4th Judicial District Attorney's Office gave a child molester. Instead of going to prison, Hector Gonzalez was given probation. And as Chief Investigative Reporter Eric Ross uncovered, police arrested Gonzalez in a previous case for assaulting more young girls. Our investigation discovered the same district attorney's office that let Gonzalez walk away on probation also decided back in 2011 to dismiss another case involving four felony sexual assault charges. Did the justice system fail? Well, tonight we present the evidence and let you decide. They offered him a plea deal, and that is when I reached out to you all um, because I was in awe of the plea deal. A deal Valerie Montoya is outraged about. A deal given to a man named Hector Gonzalez. A man who repeatedly sexually assaulted Valerie's four-year-old granddaughter. Why should this man get to ride off into the sunset like he did nothing? Valerie cared for her granddaughter in her mother's absence, but she couldn't always be there, especially with work. And that's when Hector and his wife, the friendly neighbors across the street, stepped in to help. So if there were days I might be running late from work, um, I would say, I would call Hector or Susan or text him. I'd be like, I'm running late, can you grab the kids? And yeah, no problem. Now mind you, I have a 10 year old son who thought the world of this man, who thought the world of him. So none of this went on when my son was around. Pretty soon, Hector was babysitting Valerie's granddaughter overnight and on weekends while his wife was away. But red flags started popping up after Hector came over one day for a pool party. Hector grabbed my granddaughter's hand and uh, he's like, come on, you're going to go stay with me today. And she had turned around and she looked at me and she had tears in her eyes. And that plays in my head over and over and over because I didn't know if the tears in her eyes now were because she was leaving grandma's house or was because she was going to go over there and something bad was going to happen. The four-year-old eventually broke her silence to her family and was taken to Memorial Hospital for a sexual assault kit test. Arrest papers document months of molestation, too graphic for us to broadcast on air. But according to investigators, the abuse began in September of 2017 until July of 2018, just a couple of weeks before he was arrested. Looking back, Valerie says she missed several red flags, like Hector buying her granddaughter clothes and showering her with gifts. I have an immense amount of guilt, very much so. I think that I should have caught this. Um, and the red flags you talk about, I didn't see anything at that time. And afterwards, just, you know, I think of knowing she's across the street with him and I'm over in my own home. Hector faced a total of five felony sexual assault charges and one misdemeanor unlawful sexual contact charge. Instead of going to trial, the district attorney's office offered Hector a plea deal. Plead guilty to one count of sexual assault and the misdemeanor unlawful sexual contact charge in exchange for dropping the other charges. Hector agreed to the deal and received four years of probation. People go to jail for far less than, than what this man did. And now, two more sexual assault survivors are coming forward, claiming they too were molested by Hector a decade ago. But the district attorney's office did nothing. He would buy us ice cream candy. said, do not tell anybody or I will kill you and your family, and I'll never forget that. He looked me dead in my face and said that. Um, I don't trust people. Men, um, I'm paranoid about everything. Uh, ever since all this has happened, um, I'm scared of him finding me, killing me, um, 
molesting me again. Um, it's just changed who I am completely. When you're that young, you don't know how wrong it is, and you don't know, you don't, you don't really know right and wrong at that time. After that, it carried on for a couple years till I was about seven, maybe, and it was actual rape. Um, sorry. He took away my self-confidence and took away my childhood, really. So what exactly happened to Michaela and Cassandra's case? Court documents reveal the case was dropped in part because, quote, more investigation was required, presumably to gather more evidence. Whether that happened, though, remains a mystery because the DA's office has refused to sit down and answer our questions. Cassandra and Michaela have to live every day with memories of what happened more than a decade ago hoping justice will one day be served. I don't want to be portrayed as a victim because I am a survivor. Survivors, indeed. But even then, it's hard to mask the pain of their pasts. As for Valerie and her granddaughter, they sold their house and moved to a different part of El Paso County. At the end of the day, you can only rearrange your living room so many ways, and you still have to go out that front door and you still see that house. So that house became that house. As for Hector Gonzalez, he has since sold his house and moved to New York. He'll remain on probation until 2023. Now we want to thank these survivors here for sharing their stories with us. They hope by speaking up, more people will come forward. And if you're not comfortable reporting a sexual assault to law enforcement, there are numerous other agencies throughout Southern Colorado dedicated to helping people who have been through traumatic experiences. We have links to those resources on our website right now. Just head to KOAA.com. Always watching out for you, Eric Ross, News 5 Investigates.